You walked out of this place, Oik Tanak, in at the end of 2022. What was what was the feeling like when you walked back in here for the first time at the top of this season? Yeah, it's been already for some time now. So uh, obviously, I've really got used to. I know, you know, uh, you know from or from or behind which stories, which guys. So uh, I understand a bit, but I mean, generally, still in a, in a big uh, picture, the technical side has been the same. The people has been the same. Uh, yes, the top part has changed a bit with technical director and uh, and with the principal. But uh, other than that, you know, I. I knew all the people which made the life so much easier to, to come back. Uh, still, you know, uh, I would say the biggest part obviously has been the changing the car, you know, uh, understanding the car again and finding the setups. And, you know, so far we've, be, we've been going on tarmac, snow, gravel, all the rallies. First time, you know, you can't carry uh, on anything, you know, from the previous rallies. So this has been probably the toughest part. That's that's all very professional, and that's what I expected. But what about the the sort of personal feeling? You know, is it is it the kind of thing that you've you perhaps sold a house, moved out, and then moved back in? What was that? If it was odd or just back to business? I, to be honest, no, I didn't feel really anything uh, odd. Uh, I would say generally very positive to see uh, how the team has moved forward. You know, uh, definitely, you know. They got uh, more organized and, you know, was, again, more uh, professional inside here. So I would say everything has been positive. Uh, yeah, the only part is that, uh, that you know, the car which, which was brought in in the beginning of uh, 22, kind of in the rush, you know, the, with all the regulations and things, you know, this is, uh, you know, which is probably the limitation, but I would say the the know-how and, and uh, the technical knowledge behind everything is there. So, I mean, yeah, the, personally, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, very, I would say, positively uh, motivated and, and happy the way uh, the company is running. Yeah, you want to win every rally you start, of course you do, but what was the target? What did you have in your mind for the first three rallies? What was sensible? Uh, nothing what I've each achieved at the moment. <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, it's it's actually quite a surprise the way it uh, has started. Uh, it's it's nothing I've had. I think the past six, seven years, I guess. So uh, it's been quite an interesting start. At least uh, step by step, the the speed has been coming there. I, I've been feeling more and more comfortable in the car. So so uh, that has been good. But uh, I mean, yeah, obviously the okay Monte was a small mistake. Um, yeah, we. I, I would say we were uh, still not going to uh, uh, fight for the victory there. We had some other issues as, as well there for two days. So, yeah, this kept us away. But, yeah, the, the mistake in Sweden was clearly mine. And then the issue in uh, in Kenya, you know, uh, was, was very unfortunate. So, uh, yeah, somehow all the bad things have happened now in, uh, in basically in, in a row, you know. So this has been a bit of setback maybe but uh, still we are very early in the championship I, I'm feeling better in the car so I, uh, I'm not too desperate You work as hard as ever in the gym you put the time in with the onboards and to come out with, with not three wins but three difficult results how do you put that behind you and focus on what's coming next? I mean uh, yeah you, you go in uh, next rally now up here in, in Croatia so uh, it always gets a bit more difficult in this kind of situation where uh, you can't really make a mistake, but you also can't really uh, keep back. You know, you need to keep pushing because you are somehow chasing in the championship, so you need to deliver. But uh, you know, normally when you have a, a good go for a couple of rallies, then you can uh, take a chances and you can risk. But uh, in, in my position, I I would say that uh, now we need to find somehow the balance that. You can't really risk anything, but uh, but same time you need to deliver. So uh, it's definitely somehow pressure, and, and uh, also we need to try to make our job as perfect as we can. So. It, it is, and, and coming to an event like this, it's you look outside. We've got rain, we've got snow, we've got sunshine. It's even more difficult, isn't it, when you don't have a consistent level of grip, if you like. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely going to be challenging, and uh, I mean, yeah, every rally so far it's been a bit of challenge, but uh, 
but this one uh, won't be any walk in the park as well so it will be a tough one but but I mean uh, yeah from the other point of view it can be also our chance so we just need to see how it winds up you know during the weekend yeah when, when you look back to, to 2019 you know you were walking on water then you you were riding the crest of a wave all those metaphors it was incredible have you ever had that feeling again that you had through 19 that feeling of complete dominance of the sport I mean yeah these these kind of things are a bit more uh, tricky to achieve uh, obviously yeah, in 1819 I uh, you know the, it's the package around you uh, you know everything is working for you and then uh, obviously I had a really uh, good feeling with the car as well so uh, you know now the basically uh, yeah the, the other, every other car you know they've been also fast cars but uh, it's always been a bit uh, different not really uh, for me and then somehow very soft front and you know difficult to get the feeling so uh, yeah I've had to push myself quite a bit uh, which which always makes the life a bit more uh, difficult but but I don't know let's see what what comes next uh, you know it's been just this kind of period where I uh, need to teach myself you know the, how to, to manage the different kind of situations where you don't really maybe feel yourself fully comfortable but you still need to deliver so uh, another challenge so I mean yeah every day is a school day so. yeah it is it, I guess that it must be more frustrating in a way that you've had that incredible feeling and it's now just if you never had it you kind of wouldn't know what it felt like would you yeah it's true I maybe some way I've been lucky that I've had it so <laughs> yeah but it does it's like when you've been a millionaire and you lose all of your money <laughs> it's trying to find that money and get it back um yeah <laughs> yeah maybe it's not that big contrast but <laughs> no no true in in all of your time driving when do you think when did you take the most pleasure from driving a rally car ah uh, well Basically, it's, it's always when you feel at home uh, in the car and, you know, you, you feel, uh, you know, you, you have a good feedback and, and you have confidence. So, uh, yeah, in that, that moment, uh, you can do whatever you want. You can do uh, any pace uh, is needed and, and so on. So, uh, yeah, these are these moments. But, I mean, rallying you know, is, uh, is a difficult sport. Uh, every day can be so different to a previous one or, or to next one. So... It's, it's just constantly changing, conditions changing, you know, uh, roads are always different. I mean, uh, yeah, it's always difficult to be in this sweet spot, but, uh, you know, if you can be close to it and, and you can already predict what is coming, you know, this gives you the confidence and like this, yes, you can do whatever you want. Do, do you take the same enjoyment, you know, from when you first started out driving in, in the, the yellow golf or whatever that? I suppose the sport and your everything that you do in the sport has changed completely, but is there still that same excitement when you get in and start the engine? I mean, yeah, personally, for me, the, the best moment is still the, you know, when we put the helmet on and, you know, everything uh, gets quiet and you can go to your own zone uh, together with, with Martin, so we can do our own stuff. So, I mean, yeah, the, this from start to finish, uh, it's our time, nobody is disturbing us and, you know, we can focus on our things, so definitely it's uh, it's the best part of the sport now moving on to team principles you've you've had a varied bunch of, of team principles andrea says hello by the way how how would how would cyril compare what what do you think f- so far from what you've seen from cyril what are your thoughts on him i'm pretty sure he's uh he's a very uh, good guy generally for our sport you know he has seen so much uh, you know the other big sports obviously f1 is the biggest of all motorsport you know so i mean uh, coming somebody like this from uh, from sport like this and uh, you know the the know-how the knowledge the the different kind of vision you know it's maybe it's the time in the sport where we actually need that you know somebody from outside comes in and and uh, gives us the you know the maybe the I don't know the next route you know or, or uh, next way to, to go forward so uh, I mean yeah also for the team uh, it's it's been important to have somebody um, strong uh, as him and, and to, to really organize the team and then I believe that like this you know and then everybody are more happy and more relaxed because they know what they need to do and they also know that uh, everything is organized well, what's his, his management style like you know I mean if you made a mistake with with Malcolm in your early days, you got the hairdryer. It'd be like Alex Ferguson. 
Uh, and, and Adamo had a very different. What's what's is Cyril a shouter? Is he does he put his arm around you or? Yeah, it's been only three rallies. Uh, yeah. yeah, somehow not not good three rallies. So for sure he he expects all of us to deliver. You know the the team is delivering. Everybody are putting the effort in. So so shoot the drivers. So um, I mean, yeah, he's he's a fair player. I, I can say so far he's been a fair guy. And uh, yeah, he he's pushing himself. Uh, he's you know trying to give us the best chances or best tools to, to do our job and, and uh, you know we need to deliver so I mean uh, yeah I, I think the way he's working is, is fair for everyone. It's never easy in a team when you're you've had three difficult rallies and your teammate your direct measure is is leading the championship but how how is it how are things with Thierry now and how worth you know when you left at the end of 22 maybe there was the odd difficult patch are you all buddies again how are things with Thierry uh, I wouldn't say we are buddies and uh, we've never been buddies but uh, I mean yeah we are uh, we are teammates uh, you know he's he's definitely a strong character as well but uh, he's doing good job obviously yeah, he's been in the team for a long long time mm-hmm. I don't know 10 years probably so uh, yeah he he knows the place very well uh, he knows the, the car you know since the very beginning so uh, yeah he's He's, he's good at that, but um, I mean, yeah, it's only the beginning of the year, very beginning, and yeah, the gravel season is only going to start. So, uh, I mean, the championship-wise, definitely nothing is decided yet. So, uh, there is still a lot going to happen, and uh, yeah, it's just the beginning. Yeah, there was a, there was a lot of speculation in Sweden, and then perhaps a bit in Kenya about what the team was doing. Were they taking strategic approaches? And here, there. You know Andrea Adamo as well as I do. I'm, I'm sure you spoke to him after those. I, mean, I did. And I said to Andrea, what would you do? And he said, every time, take the strategic approach. You do whatever you can do. Do you, do you think, is that the right way for this team now to, to follow those, those team orders and do what Adamo would do? Should you take every opportunity? And I'm not saying that the team did in Sweden, but moving forward, should they? I mean... Uh... We are always trying to maximize uh, the ultimate goal is still uh, to, to achieve the championships. You know, is it the manufacturer yeah. or the driver? So you always try to maximize, and, and uh, that is all, all, always the target as well. You know, so you know in in reality or this moment when you need to take the decision, you know, then there are always some other risks. You know, can you lose something? Can you win something? You know, what are uh, the chances? You know, or, or yeah, if you do the the swap or whatever and then you know the next uh, stage you lose some other car you know and uh, you always need to, to somehow manage but uh, yeah I mean every time you need to do the decision the, the situation is different you know you, you can't really compare it to the previous ones but but uh, I believe the, um, still be you know it's the sport and, and in the sport uh, the only target is to win and uh, and uh, yeah whatever way uh, is possible to win then oh, you always work for it you know so the effort you put you put in you know as building the team and as driving the car and, and all the other things you know you basically it's it's only possible if you maximize from everywhere so. does it surprise you i mean you've lived in in toyota team and seen a very different approach from them does it surprise you that toyota says no every time to, to team orders I guess it's possible when you when you're so confident and and you know you you know your place and you know that you're so strong that if you do it or you don't do it you will still win. So uh, I guess yeah they they've been just uh, very very strong for uh, quite a long time already and uh, and yeah that's how it works. Yeah, you've certainly been told to slow down from time to time uh, to help team team members out. How would would it feel you know if your championship doesn't play out the way you want it and and they ask you to slow down for Thierry that that is actually the the agreement we have that uh, in the end of the year if there is if I have no chance then obviously I, I play for the team so that's how the team works we have seen a, a little bit in the past couple of years some difficult times with with the media not it's not been easy all the time do you feel that in some ways that people have tried to get at you um, like had an agenda against Oit Tanak, if you know what I mean I, I would say generally no. I uh, let's say with professional people, I have uh, no issue. Uh, and you know, if uh, if 
if the people asking questions are uh, you know prepared and professional then obviously i'm professional as well and uh, everything is manageable uh, i would say uh, the normally the let's say the questions and answers get a bit funny when uh, you know the the question is is really not uh, prepared and then also obviously the the answer will come on the same level so so i mean yeah the amount of uh, interviews you are you're giving and and you know uh, and basically yeah, some guys are asking you know then it's always a bit so and so and yeah it depends obviously of the day as well you know that uh, if you are uh, interested to speak out something you know from uh, let's say from a bad question or no so this it's true though isn't it you know we're, we're in a world championship and you know you're the elite rally drivers the best of the best and journalists should make the effort to be on the same level in in their terms the pack of journalists who normally come from rally to rally they they know they know what is going on and they they are mm. prepared and and uh, yeah like like this you know you can get into the discussions and uh, and obviously the from there you get some interesting stories uh, at the times yeah, there's been yeah somebody maybe comes and goes but uh, obviously uh, if you are not prepared and then and uh, you, you just ask, you know, how, how do you feel? Then obviously it's difficult to really explain, you know, what's, what yeah. feeling you, you are asking for. So. Yeah. Ultimately, what is enough in the World Championship for Oik Tannik? I'm sure you want another championship, but do you want another 10 years in, in, this, in this championship? Uh, you ask personally for me or the rally championship? Yeah, no. I, I, you, hope, I hope the rally championship <laughs> lasts a bit longer than 10 <laughs> yeah. years. <laughs> you might outlast the championship. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hope it goes for it. I mean, personally, for myself, I'm I'm basically uh, happy the way I am at the moment. I'm still in a good shape and I feel good in the car. So, I mean, as long as I, I, I feel happy and the way I'm driving and I, I still feel that uh, the speed is there and I have more to give, then, uh, yeah, I see no reason why not to be there. So, uh, yeah, for the moment, uh, from my side, I'm happy to keep going. I, I hope the cars are... <laughs> are going to be fun in the future as well and uh, yeah the, the way I don't see the reason to retire at the moment. Do, do you want to say anything about the, the regulations and where we're at? I think yeah, it's at the moment it's, it's difficult to really uh, explain as we really don't know where we are at you know so that's it's, it's so open and uh, and it's just very confusing I would say. Rallying is in your blood you know the, the family your, your father and everything competed how important is it that you always remain in the sport with Red Grey looking forward and into the future beyond the World Championship? It's difficult to, to say. I, uh, first of all, I, I hope the, the championship stays the, the way it is and, and hopefully it, it gets bigger. But uh, yeah, as a, for a small team as well, you know, for all the small teams, it's very important that... Uh, uh, that the sport keeps growing you know it also it keep, it gives job for so many people you know all of us here and, and uh, then the same way this this small team you know we the, we have many people working there and then you know we are going from rally to rally so uh, yeah I, I try to ki- give everything I have to there uh, obviously uh, yeah I'm, let's say I'm I'm asking a lot uh, where I'm driving here you know from the engineers and from the team but uh, there as well I am I'm pushing for the better quality and, and to, to get more organized and then you know the, the way I imagine how a team should work so uh, yeah we for sure I'm not doing it alone there are the companions who are <laughs> taking care of it every day I'm I'm not able to be there every day but uh, but still I would say we are going in a good direction and, and uh, yeah hopefully the quality is improving as well. Do, do you enjoy that aspect of your life that a, a lot of drivers want to go home from here and relax and train but you know, you've got almost a second job, haven't you? With, with uh, no, it's not my. I'm, like I said, I'm not really working every day there. Yeah, I we speak in the phone, and, and uh, yeah, I, from week to week, I, I go through, I see how the things are going. But uh, like everyday t- stuff, uh, we have people who are taking care of it. So uh, yeah, I I know as, as long as I'm professional, I I don't have this kind of free time to to take care uh, of business. So I uh, I need to focus on my own job, but. Uh, but yeah, as long as the people are there and, you know, I can still complain. So complaining doesn't take too much time. Lastly, the, the, the one question I've, I've asked a, a few people this year is we're talking about the promotion of the sport. David Coulthard said rally drivers are, we always know, rally drivers are the absolute heroes compared to Formula One drivers. How frustrating is it 
for you that we see Formula One week in, week out, getting millions, billions of views around the world. And what you do is even more incredible. And yet still, there's not that much recognition, if you like, for, for, what, for what you do. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it, let's say WRC, yes, it, it's, it's definitely in our views uh, less than it uh, could be. It, it could be so much bigger, but still, I would say, yeah, F1 in the end is, is the king, you know, in a way. Yeah, the, maybe the event is a bit easier to organize. It's in one place. Yeah. The, you bring the people together and, and uh, blah, 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 all the nice and clean. But, uh, but still... I wouldn't say really that you know F1 is for the drivers is so much easier than uh, for the rally drivers. The, the risks are still high, and you know to keep focused, lap after lap after lap to do always maximum. You know it it takes so much discipline as well. I'm I'm sure I couldn't do it because you know just going through the same corners you know for one and a half hour, <laughs> it takes a lot of concentration and a lot of focus. So it's not an easy job. I mean, yeah, I, I like rallying as, uh, you know, the, every situation is always new, you know, you somehow you you need to be always kind of open-minded and, and, uh, and yeah, you just drive to your feelings. So it's very different sport. Obviously, the risks are, are high here as well. But, uh, yeah, in the end, it's, it's down to the, yeah, the PR people, you know, how, how they grow the sport and, and uh, this is for sure what we everybody here are working for you know to, to really grow the sport and, and uh, yeah to, to show it to the people as well and, and hopefully they can have some you know fun as well in the weekends or out of the job so I mean yeah it's in the end in the life everything is, is possible but you know uh, yeah like we've seen <laughs> not always uh, everything goes you know the way you wish or you want but uh, but you still need to fight for it so. do you watch it Formula 1 Yes, I, I watch it, and I mean, yeah, the, the way in the past few years they build it, you know, you have how much technical uh, information you have, and, you know, every, all this makes it uh, interesting, and uh, I mean, there are some conflicts and things, and, you know, this is, this is what we need, you know, this is what makes stories, and, and, uh, and uh, it's cool, you know, so, I mean, yeah, the, the sport is, is not bad, obviously, yeah, it's, it's very expensive, and, uh, you know, people like to follow expensive stuff. So. Yeah, true. Have you never fancied a bit of racing? Have you ever done any? No, I mean, yeah, for for few laps, uh, you can try the cars and do some things. But uh, I mean, yeah, to do one and a half hour, yes. I mean, you can definitely do it sometimes. But I mean, to do a career like this, I think uh, it needs a different kind of people. Yeah, but no, uh, like touring cars or anything. You could maybe with Hyundai, you could do something. Yeah, but at the moment, I'm happy where I am. Last one. A year on from Craig, uh, we went to the memorial today uh, and it's kind of hard to believe that it's a year, it's even harder to believe that he's, he's not here, but with the passing of a year, do you look back any, any more special memories of, of Craig? You know, what are your thoughts uh, a, a year on? Yeah, obviously the, the first thought is always that, you know, it's, uh, even one year has gone, you know, it's still... Uh, kind of somehow uh, impossible that something like this could even uh, actually happen and uh, you know the more you think the ways and things and blah 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 I mean uh, yeah it's it's quite incredible but I mean yeah it's uh, I would say all of us we somehow learn to live with it but uh, but we'll, we still remember I mean uh, yeah the, the year goes past you get even from the phone you get the photos with, from Greg and you know the the messages and things and you know I, you still remember everything so yeah for sure it's it's going to live in our memories forever so yeah he will always be there but it's just yeah strange that he's actually not there